Before we get into the video proper, I regret to inform those of you who perhaps don't follow the project too closely and are not in the loop that Jim the Hamster died two days ago as of this filming. Uh, of old age, and so far as I can tell, nothing was wrong with the habitat. Air was flowing, the heater was on. I thought maybe it was too warm, but in the past, when they have been too cold, they would um, pile fluff on top of themselves when sleeping, and when they were too warm, they would sleep off to one side and not directly on the pad. Jim was directly on the pad, even up to his death. Uh, he was one year, seven months old, so that's within about the right time frame. They normally live about two years for dwarf hams. Um, I had several prior sets of hamsters. Uh, in fact, all except for George and Scott live close to three years. So I don't know if I did something wrong with Jim or if I did something right with all of my hamsters and Jim just had unforeseen health issues. That's why before I get into this month's project, I wanted to share some moving fan art that longtime followers of the Hampshire Project made in tribute to Jim and his one year and seven months of service as a brave hamster knot. This one was made by Tiny Tiniest Yam, I believe, on Twitter, uh, who has also made a bunch of other wonderful fan art of this project. I think my favorite part are the little alien hams who are welcoming Jim to his next great adventure. I'm sorry to say I forget who made this one. I didn't save their name with it. I know Tiny Dam just because she's made so much art for Hampshire. This other one was, uh, I treasure it just as much. I just can't recall uh, who made it. If you're the artist who made this, please let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll put that in the video description. All right, now on to the video proper. I hope it wasn't too much of a downer. If you hadn't noticed, it's hot as balls out. Uh, I didn't vote for that, did you? Why, what's wrong with you? Uh, at any rate, uh, I don't have an air conditioner, so it's been sweltering in here. I've got the fans going, it's not really helping much. But I got to thinking. There are such things as electrically heated garments. I have an electrically heated jacket, uh, electrically heated gloves, and electrically heated pants for winter. How is it that in 2020 there's no such thing as an air-conditioned jacket? I mean, I'm sure you'll tell me just peel off some layers, but eventually you get down to your skin and you can only peel that off once. My doctor specifically told me not to do that. Again. As I often do when I have what I think is a good idea, I went and checked Google first to see if anybody else came up with it and might already be selling it. And yes, they have and they are. There are liquid-cooled shirts and vests and other similar upper body garments, which are just what they sound like. They cool your body in the same way that a liquid cooling setup in your PC carries heat away from your processor. Namely, by circulating ice-cold water through a series of tubes. Uh, that's a fresh meme, right? Remember that? In the case of your PC, it gets rid of the heat from that coolant fluid through radiator fins and a fan. In the case of these liquid-cooled garments, they typically circulate that water, which picks up body heat from you as it passes through all the tubing, and then puts it into ice, a big block of ice that you carry in something resembling a fanny pack or like a, a or backpack. Or there's, there's a couple of different mounting solutions. However, most of these were designed in the 1990s. Consequently, they still use very outdated technology. Many of them rely on a small lead-acid battery, unbelievably, given how heavy those are and how poor their energy density is. Even the ones that don't are just unfathomably expensive for what they are. Check this one out. Get, get a load of that price. Can you believe that? Obviously, I'm not paying that for some ice, a pump, and a shirt or a vest that has tubing running through it. I can probably make that by myself. This is my cooling solution. It is a vacuum insulated thermos, which I believe will enable it to be much smaller than the ice backpacks, which are typically not insulated at all, so they're constantly melting even while they're not cooling you. Um, inside, 
there are five of these refreezable blue ice cores. So in between uses, if I keep another five of these in the freezer, I can just exchange them. So if I'm out there riding my bike and I get too hot and the apparatus is no longer cooling my body adequately, it's probably because the blue ice is melted. I can just go perform a quick exchange. I'm keeping it uh, slung around my upper body, hanging at my hip in this neoprene insulated sheath, which is another another layer of insulation, which is really critical for... Cr critical? Uh, what the fuck is critical? I think that the heat's getting in my brain. I can't even smell my heart breathe. Critical. It's critical for applications like this, because you, you want that ice to do as much cooling work as possible without losing the energy density represented in the the frozen state of, of the ice to the outside temperature. There's also a pocket here, which I could slip a power bank into, but but it occurred to me that number one, uh, I wouldn't want something like a battery that's gonna get hot as it discharges right by where I'm keeping the ice, because I've already gone to so much trouble to prevent it from melting prematurely. And two, I don't think I actually need a battery for this project. You see, I've got this seven watt solar panel, which I can wear on my back, on the back of any garment I come up with that has the tubing in it. And it has a mesh pocket on the underside into which I've placed the pump. It's just a standard uh, pond pump like you'd use for like a fountain or a little fiberglass waterfall or something. The pump is 2.4 watts, something around that. And the panel is seven, which is ample even for a very wide variety of lighting conditions. Um, it might even continue going in the shade. I don't think it'll keep working indoors, but that's a feature, not a bug. Because you don't want it to keep running when you're indoors. You don't want to have to manually switch it off when you go into a building either. If it runs while you're in a building, it's cooling you needlessly and it's wasting the, the, the ice. Ideally, it should only be circulating the water when you're outside in the sun, which makes powering it completely and, ex and, and exclusively off of solar, I think, a better idea than it sounds like. To that end, I have purchased off of Amazon a mesh traffic safety vest. Uh, the mesh will make it easier to attach this tubing throughout using these zip ties. And I have multiples of the zip ties in the tubing, which actually worked out to be unexpectedly expensive. And I paid taxes this month, so I'm completely wiped out financially. That was all my savings. I have very close to zero dollars in, in my bank account right now. I'm really anticipating that money dump from Patreon in a couple of days. You know, the, the media is always asking, why don't millennials have savings? Because the government takes it. Look into how much uh, self-employed persons get taxed. It's pretty crazy. There's a brutal price uh, a, huge pound of flesh that they extract from you for the privilege of escaping the rat race. So if ever you look at content creators and think, wow, that guy's got it made, uh, rest assured there are hidden downsides. There's all sorts of people, familiar and unfamiliar, who show up with their hands outstretched to you wanting stuff uh, the minute that you stop working at a conventional job. So basically, I, I regret to say that not only do I have bad news for you about Jim, but I don't have a finished product for you this month because I'm unusually skint and just don't have enough money to complete it. Uh, I should have enough money to complete it by next month. You'll have a, a better, more worthwhile video. Uh, I always regret when I don't have something cool and exciting to show you every month, but this is just one of those months where finances don't permit it. I really do think it'll be worth the wait though. A lot of these other solutions have very good looking garments that are well designed with the integrated tubing, but very poorly thought out cooling solutions where it's just something like a camelback with uh, ice cubes in it, which is ridiculous. There's no insulation whatsoever. So a lot of that ice is gonna melt just being outside and on a hot day. I think I, I think I can improve on that and I think I can improve on how it's powered. None of these other garments are solar powered when it seems to me like that's an ideal application for it. Is there anything here I could patent and make money off of? Probably not. It's only a slight modification to an already patented and widely sold system. It'll be nice to have though and it will be something which once I um, document the process of making it on film 
anybody out there with a little bit of plumbing know-how and uh, the, maybe two, three hundred bucks ought to be able to make for themselves too. So if you like what you see and you're interested and have wondered, as I have at times, how is it that the nation which put men on the moon has yet to invent a air-conditioned jacket? Uh, this is your big chance. Make your own. In closing, um, I'm, I'm not going to purchase another hamster right away. Uh, I'm going to be in mourning for the next couple of days, during which time the main hamster feed will be offline. My internet is also increasingly uh, unreliable, I think because more people being at home on the internet than the ISP has the capacity to handle. Um, so look for that to come back in a couple days. Just just give me some time to accept that you know we, we lost one of the, the real ones. Uh, the ham bunker feed, however, should still be up. It, it'll be intermittent because, as I mentioned, the internet is shitty and unreliable here. I'm working on that because as many of you know, I have ambitions to sort of segue all of this mad science YouTube stuff into uh, a, a Twitch streaming career, which is probably one of the funniest terms of the 21st century, if used uh, seriously as like a plan for how you're going to support yourself. But that's the position I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking giving it a shot. And of, of course, that requires a steady internet connection. And many of you who are already longtime watchers of my Twitch have been just perfect, patient saints putting up with the constant interruptions. And I don't want to make you do that. I don't want you, want you to take time out of your night uh, to watch my feed and then not, not know when it's going to come back, uh, having to sit there wasting your time refreshing. So I'm going to fix that. I'm, I'm rolling up my sleeves, uh, tearing out all the stops, uh, additional metaphor connoting determination uh, to fix this once and for all and actually get this connection to be reliable because it's kind of crucial for all the projects I'm doing to be able to stream live feeds of the underwater habitat, of the bunker, and whatever else I do. That said, uh, sorry I don't have a finished product this month for you. I should by next month. Thank you for following along as always, and please F in the comments for Jim.